Good morning, y'all. All right. Uh, we're looking at uh, John chapter 1 this morning. So we are in John chapter 1, verses 19 through 28 this morning. So this is day 6 of our uh, facilitated time with Jesus. So hopefully this is helpful to you. All right, so we're going to do the four question method, but before we get started with that, let me uh, pray for us. Oh God, thank you for the gift of life this morning. We pray that you would, yeah, help us to focus in on you this morning. Oh God, if there's any sin within us, any ways that we sinned against you, I pray that you would uh, forgive us, Lord God. And through the sacrifice of your son, you would cleanse us. Through the blood of your son, you would cleanse us, Lord. And uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, you would fill us and guide us into your truth this morning. You are, you said your word would lead us into truth. So show us into your way and help us to be able to walk in your way. Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So we're going to start uh, with the first question is, what does this passage tell us about God? So we're looking at John chapter 1, verses 19 through 28, and I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. So if you could follow along either on your uh, uh, phone through like a Bible app or if you're on your computer uh, through a Bible website, I recommend Bible Gateway or... Uh, if you have a paper Bible, that's fine. So John chapter 1, verses 19 through 28. Now this is John's testimony. When the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was, he did not fail to confess, but confess freely, I am not the Messiah. So remember this first reading, we're trying to think about uh, what does this passage tell us about God? They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take, to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of the one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you're not the Messiah? nor Elijah, nor the prophet. I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. So once again, we're trying to think of and asking God, what does this passage tell us about God? So I'm going to give us about a minute. What does this passage tell us about God? This one's a little bit trickier because a lot of it is an interaction between uh, John the Baptist and some other human beings. Um, but knowing that even God works through people, uh, there is one part, uh, verse 23, that I saw. Uh, what John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, 
I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. I think here I see, once again, God speaks through people, uh, not just through John uh, the Baptist, but he's quoting a prophet um, who spoke the words of God. It's Isaiah. And Isaiah was saying just hundreds of years before, make straight the way for the Lord. Um, and I see in that, yeah, we need to prepare uh, the way for the Lord. Um, that uh, God is holy. God is so set apart from us that uh, there needs to be a preparation. There needs to be an honor of him. And that's kind of related to uh, John recognizing in verse 27, like, look, like, I'm not even worthy to untie the sandals of of this person that is God, right? He's referring to Jesus. Um, you know, I, I know we often say, you know, Jesus is my friend and Jesus is my homeboy. And, you know, in a sense, he humbled himself to, to be that for us. But we have to remember, like, he's God. Um, yeah, what does it mean that our God, like, he comes close, but we're not even worthy to untie his sandals. Like, we're not even worthy to even stoop down uh, beforehand. Yeah, just remembering the holiness of God. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, the second question I want us to think upon is, and, and just ask God about, is God, what, what does this passage tell me about people? What does this passage tell me about people? So, uh, yeah, starting from verse 19. Now, this was John's testimony. When the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was, he did not fail to confess, but confess freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you're not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. All right, so I'll give us a minute to think on that. What does this passage tell us about God? I mean, tell us about people. I think what I'm seeing here, what does this tell us about people? Yeah, I, I see kind of two things. I see the response of the Jewish leaders, and, and, and these are religious leaders too. These are like the pastors. These are the people who study the Bible. 
um, they couldn't recognize who the Messiah was. They couldn't recognize who the anointed one of God was. They thought uh, John the Baptist was. Uh, so it just shows me, what does this tell me about people? It tells me that, gosh, even when we study the scriptures, um, we could still miss out on who God is uh, and focus on the wrong things and not being able to um, even recognize God. I came in the passage just right before as well. Uh, yeah, that we could be stuck in our own ideas uh, and, and miss God himself. Uh, but what I also see about God is there's hope for us. There's also we can recognize God too because uh, there's John. Uh, John the Baptist, he recognized that Jesus is coming uh, and he recognized Jesus. And he recognized, like, once again, like, he wasn't even worthy to uh, even stoop down and do such a menial task uh, for Jesus that he wasn't worthy. And what I, what I see in the difference of that is our human tendency towards pride and thinking we know, we know everything that we need to know. Uh, but it's the humble one. It's John the Baptist who recognized just how holy God is. Um, it's really through our humility uh, that we recognize uh, maybe we could come to recognize who God is. Uh, so I wonder, you know, Jesus says later, like, blessed are the meek uh, for theirs is the kingdom of God. There's something about when we humble ourselves, it puts us in a better place to recognize him. Um, yeah. The third question we think about is, God, like, how do you want us to practice this word today? Or how do you want us to obey this word? So I'm just going to ask, and we just take just a minute to just listen. <sighs> Heavenly Father, um, yeah, how do you want us to obey this word today? Well, God, speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. I think a challenge for me, I sense, was, you know, I need to humble myself today. Um, yeah, today's my birthday, but uh, gosh, even, even that is a gift of life. That's, that's, that's a grace. Uh, you know, I had no control over myself being born, and what a grace that is. And, you know, um, yeah. Just humbling myself today in the sense of not thinking myself less, but not thinking myself higher than, than I am. And to humble myself throughout the day and not just assume that I know best. <laughs> and just listen to God uh, throughout the day uh, where I can to stop and say, God, what's your perspective on this? Help me to see what I'm not seeing. So I'm going to try to do that. Uh, the last the last question is, who can I share this with? So hopefully you could share this with somebody, not just this video, but the actual, these ideas, if you're blessed by anything from his word, uh, just sharing that with somebody, somebody who might need that encouragement. Um, I want to kind of end with uh, something that's helpful for me. Uh, it's called a breath prayer. So uh, it's a way to kind of remember the word throughout the day. I don't know about you, but sometimes like we could read the word and oh, it was a great time. And then by the end of the day, we're like totally forgotten it. Um, 
But one way is to create a breath prayer from whatever God was speaking to you uh, this morning. So for me, uh, you know, uh, a way to think about it, something I liked is like, okay, God is holy. You know, God is holy. And uh, I can make a breath prayer by saying, thank you, Jesus. And then I say, you are, and then whatever. So it's really about focusing on who Jesus is. Um, and then if we recognize his holiness, you know, that, that will keep us in a humble place, I think. So, uh, yeah, I breathe in. I say, thank you, Jesus. I breathe out. You are holy. And I breathe out. This is really good to kind of center on, especially in these anxious times. And I just do it a couple times. Thank you, Jesus. You are holy. 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 So I just did that like, like a couple times, like four times or so. Uh, kind of need to do it sometimes until my mind centers. But actually, the longer you hold your breath and the longer you kind of breathe out, uh, it really kind of actually just stops your just mind from just racing and just slows it down. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's helpful to you. Hopefully that's a helpful tool to you today. All right. God bless you guys today. All right. Bye.